Hello, it's Susie Chocolate here. I'm so honoured to be part of Marta's first blog hop and giveaway using her wonderful box of sunshine. I'm making this lovely shaker card for you today using the sheet from the box you can now see on the screen. It's a really lovely size card. The sheet cuts into two pieces which I have trimmed to five and three quarters by eight and a quarter inches. That's 14 and a half centimetres by 21 centimetres. I've used a piece of A4 white 250 GSM cardstock for the base. I didn't quite score it in half as I wanted to be able to give some round measurements for you all to use. So if you're using an A4 piece you will need to just cut the sheet to 11 and a half by 8 and a quarter inches or 29 by 21 centimetres. For anyone cutting from larger size white card like A3 size you'll need to cut the same. 11 and a half by 8 and a quarter inches or 29 by 21 centimetres. Um, I've used some Kalal glue to stick the um, card front on um, and now I'm using a double sided adhesive foam tape or 3D foam tape. Mine is 23 millimetres wide by 3 millimetres deep so there is a good depth as I like um, to have a good depth for the shaker element. Um, as mine is wide, as you can see, I'm going to cut it into three strips. To do this, I like to stick the tape onto some greaseproof baking paper before I cut it so that the tape doesn't make my scissors all gummy when you cut the strips. Plus, a little tip here for you, especially for shaker cards or where you want to curve the foam tape, I find if you take off the original thick cover paper from the foam tape and leave on the greaseproof paper, you'll find that the foam tape is very flexible and will go around the circle without any scrunching up. You will see I have no trouble bending it smoothly around the corners, um, my corners, around the circle on Marta's paper. Um, just make sure that you join the ends of the tape up really well so that none of the shaker contents will shake out. I then made um, a lovely gold frame with scalped edge from some satin mirror card. Um, as you can see, I'm just sticking it down with some masking tape to make sure that it stays in place. I cut two circles the same, um, and then I cut um, a wider frame for the very top. So the two bottom ones have a slightly larger hole in the centre than the top one. Um, all the layers are stuck together matching the scalloped edge up. Um, I used red liner tape and some drops of quick grab PVA glue that I rub around with, the, with my finger just to stop the glue from oozing out and to give it a little wiggle room. Um, as you can see there, I'm just dotting the glue round and then I'll just give it a little rub. I also have my um, little glue mat out there so that um, I don't get glue on my working mat. I know that's a bit disgustingly dirty, but I can't get it any cleaner than it is. It's got lots of ink on it and marks and bits and pieces. Um, I've cleaned it um, with all sorts of things and uh, it's just left some little stains and it doesn't look too good. I think I'm gonna have to get something better to work on. <laughs> um, but uh, there we are, as you can see, we're just lining up um, all of the edges nicely and that's the wider rim on there now. If you're wondering why I cut the top scallop frame with a smaller hole I didn't want to be able to see all the layers of card in the centre of the circle on top of the acetate window I just thought that looked too chunky and so doing it the way I did you only get to see the one layer um, the acetate window for the shaker is cut with the larger scallop die and um, stuck to the uh, top frames with two rounds of red liner tape as I've used eighth of an inch wide because that makes it easy to bend around the circle again. I also added a few dots of PVA glue on top of that to give a little wiggle room. Now I decided to stick half of the shaker window onto the card before I added any sequins and confetti as I didn't think I could lift the card up with the filling in it to get the frame centred on the card properly without some of it coming out. It worked out really well actually. Um, just make sure that you don't crease your acetate or frame when you bend it open. 
And so that's the base of the card all done. And now we're ready to decorate the card however you'd like, really. Um, I cut out lots of different bits of martyrs, flowers and leaves. Plus I had those die cut swirls you can see there already cut in my stash, which I thought really suited the style of the card. Um, I have a tutorial I've made cutting martyrs flowers and leaves out on a scan and cut. If you have one and you're interested, I'll pop the link at the top right hand corner so that you can have a look at that should you wish to. Um, so I'm just um, gluing everything down with some hot glue now. And the um, the little flowers are out of Marta's um, handmade packet. And these little leaves that I'm just um, giving some shape to, they're out of the packet too. And so with a little ball tool, I'm just um, giving them a little curve so that they've got some... Um, They've got some bend and they uh, look a little bit more realistic. Uh, I added some cream florist sizzle under the gold frame and then put the flowers on top of that. I used that for some extra texture um, and then stuck that into place with hot glue as well. Those little flowers there from that Marta has handmade have got wonderful big um, pearly bobbles in the middle. They really do look gorgeous when they're on. I was really chuffed. The mixture of the um, shaker uh, contents I used, um, they were all Nouveau sequins and some confetti, um, which I've listed in my supplies. Um, and you'll be able to see what colours and everything. And they go. So, I thought they go so well with the um, colour of Marta's card. Everything in the box just uh, matches everything else. Oh, sorry about my head there. Um, everything is just colour coordinated. Um, and as you can see now, I'm just cutting out a few more flowers because I didn't have enough cut. And um, as these ones are hanging over the frame, I've cut them right back to the flower so I haven't left a border, a little white border at all. I've cut them right back to the flower because I thought that um, it just made them look uh, it looked better be, with them laying on top of the gold uh, frame. And so I'm just poking little bits in here and there and, and now we're almost done. Oh, another flower coming in. <laughs> Let's give it a little wipe. And now I'm looking at the sentiments. All of these you can see laying there. I've cut on my scan and cut machine. They cut so quickly. Um, they're all out of the smaller pack in um, Marta's box. Um, so I chose a sentiment which would get well soon because I thought that that uh, suited the card, the size, the colour and everything. And I've just gone around the edges with some gold, um, Inca gold, um, a couple of pink sparkly gems I've popped on the edges of that little banner um, and that finishes off the sentiment and um, then the card is finished. Uh, I've used a little bit of red tape, red liner tape, just to stick it on. Um, I was going to use hot glue and then I thought, oh no, it'll melt the acetate. But afterwards I realised it was heat resistant acetate anyway, so I could have used hot glue. So depending on whether yours is heat resistant acetate as to whether you can use hot glue to stick that on or not. Well, there we are. And the card is almost done. And so here are some very clear um, still shots so that you can see. Sorry, the video looks a little bit blurry. I don't know what happened there. But uh, my apologies for that. But these are nice and clear and you can see exactly what is there. Um, all the supplies I've used and the dye measurements are listed in the description box under the video on YouTube and in my blog and Facebook posts. All the links to see these are in my description box too. I hope you've enjoyed watching and will have a go at making the shaker card like this. If you haven't already bought Marta's Box of Sunshine, it is for sale on her Facebook page, Drop a Sunshine, or on her eBay shop. Thank you, until next time, bye-bye.